Hello, my name is Wes Dawson, and welcome back to yet another riveting episode of Gabagoolinate. Now, this week's episode is very special indeed. MTL cruising, baby. All right, here's the thing. Recently, I have changed my side employment, which has necessitated my presence on the island of Montreal a little more than I had uh, in the past few months, let's say. Now, Montreal can be a great city. Montreal can also be a giant floating shithole. Really depends on how you look at it and what day you're looking at it. Now, aside from the immensely profitable venture that is Gabagool Nate, I do a little bit of consulting work on the sides. Basically, other podcasters or online content creators, anybody that is looking to create top tier quality entertainment while also pulling in abysmal numbers, they come to me, they come to the expert, they come to Gabagool and Eight. So ultimately, this week's episode is more focused on things I have observed while returning back to the island in a more regular fashion. And I always say, if you don't have one interesting story at the end of the day, then you weren't paying enough attention on the road. So let's begin and let's talk about those roads. So one stretch of road I've been taking is a little bit of Henri Bourassa. Yes, everyone's favorite boulevard. Now, I just have one question for the city regarding this. Not Nothing to do with the fact that they completely re-renovated it last summer or two summers ago, at least the stretch that I live nearby, and it looks again like a fucking war zone. Um, but my question is more along the lines... Why can't someone paint the lines on this four-lane fucking boulevard? I don't understand it. Like, basically, if you haven't been driving this thing for 20 years, well, it's up to you to figure out where the fuck you're supposed to be. Now, here's the thing. If the city can't afford to paint the lines because, I don't know, they're installing a 50,000-pound metal ring in the downtown core, not a rink, a ring that just does nothing but stand there unless it's like a Stargate, well, I guess we'll find out. I don't know. Screw down some plastic strips on the road. Hell, Pay people 50 bucks a shot to just empty a spray paint can out their driver's door. Like, for Christ's sake, do something. Yeah, and when it comes to the roads in Montreal, you figure some order, some decorum, some form of civility would be present, especially with the SPVM present. Of course, the SPVM are the Montreal Police Force. Now, the thing with them is they can either be super strict and pull you over for smiling and nodding at them. Literally, that is a true story. Or they'll watch somebody's tricked-out Chevy Cavalier there's an oxymoron for you, weave in and out of traffic, squealing through intersections, and just kind of shrug it off. So I don't really understand. I don't know if they throw a dart at a thing on the wall every morning to decide how they're going to react, but it's, it's really hit or miss. In other news in Montreal, recently, well, within a couple years, and amazingly, somehow Montreal and Quebec managed to get an Amazon fulfillment center. This is great news. Now, the first thing they do, of course, is move to unionize. Now, unions can be a good thing. But the issue with these unions here in the beautiful nation of Quebec is that they more than often become these massive, bloated, ineffective, and super powerful entities whose sole purpose is self-sustainability and profit. And workers' rights or whatever. Now, Amazon certainly needs to be put in check, but with a Quebec-style union, yikes. Now, one thing I question as I'm driving through the city as well is who designed these de facto schoolgirl uniforms? Like, I don't quite understand how this is in any way appropriate. You know, tight blouse, short skirts, and stockings. Like, I'm sure it's either the same pervy old man or horny young teen running the Council of Modern Female Empowerment. Now, I've talked about this subject before, and people have asked me, Wes, why can't young women shake their goods online to strange pervs for either financial gain or self-validation? And I always say, you can. I'm not saying not to. All I'm saying is you should maybe acquire a skill or learn a trade or something along the way. You know, if your entire life has been built on being young and good looking, well, eventually you're going to get old and you won't be so good looking. And no one wants to see a 46-year-old doing Fortnite dances while dressed like a cat. Now with my new commute, I had people asking me, well, are you going to go the day before and do a little test drive to make sure you know the way? I said, are you fucking stupid? Do you think I want to spend a four-hour round trip just to confirm it's going to take me over an hour to travel 14 kilometers on the island of Montreal? I already knew that. Now, some people, like the idiot hosting this podcast, will move purposely to a specific area just to avoid excessive traffic and congestion. But with all the non-stop sporadic money pits, or rather road construction projects, you realize you're moving into the fourth level of hell before you even finish packing your boxes. There doesn't really seem to be anywhere to move where you can avoid this giant cluster of cars, people, and foolishness. 
And of course, in all this mess, my favorite solution to traffic congestion and pedestrian safety is to just paint diagonal lines on the road. Now, don't adjust the traffic lights and consequences, or add a police unit, or just design better streets. Just paint some diagonal lines that a gentle fall breeze can peel off the asphalt. That ought to do the trick. Now, of course, the subject of pedestrians and cyclists. You couldn't talk about driving around in the Isle of Montreal without talking about them. Now, definitely more needs to be done to protect pedestrians and, I suppose, cyclists. But one thing is, I think this responsibility goes both ways. I think it should be illegal to bike beside an adjacent bike path. I don't quite get that. You have a protected path, which with better kept roads than the actual fucking roadways, but you'd rather test the tensile strength of your own femur. All right, you do you. Now, one intersection on that beautiful stretch of Henri Boubou Child, or Henri Bourassa, as some people like to call it, is where it dips under the highway in one section. Now, there's a dedicated path for cyclists, protected with some barricades, space for plenty of bikes. It's great. Good call. Conversely, on Côte Verte, they have the same thing, but no path. And people would rather try to bob between a cement wall and a never-ending line of rolling steel. Like, motherfucker, get off your bike and walk along the sidewalk for 20 feet. I think you'll be able to handle it. Then hop back on your bike and continue judging others. Because I'm sure if they were to get hit while trying to squeeze in this 10-inch fucking space, there'd be flowers put at the site, a vigil attended by maybe six people, and a request that each cyclist be provided a police escort from now on. You know, it's like if I wanted to practice my tumbling on the edge of a hydro dam. You know, I pay taxes, so that's enough justification I should be allowed to use it for any purpose I deem acceptable. And then if I fall to my doom, it would be Hydro-Quebec's fault for not having better safeguards in place while I was playing on government infrastructure. And I think we're going to end this week's episode with a little comment on some of the blue-collar workers of Montreal. I, I guess they're blue-collar, not really sure what they're considered. I'm talking about garbage men and bus drivers. Not city bus drivers. Fuck them. I'm talking about school bus drivers, okay? Now, when garbage men up in uh, the northern region where my family is from complain, saying, we need more money, I say, shut your goddamn mouth. You guys drive around in an air-conditioned truck and you pick up garbage using a joystick and a camera. If the bins are too close together, you don't pick them up. If the bins are turned a little bit, you don't pick them up. If your wife didn't put out last night, they don't pick them up. So when you want more money, I say screw you. You got a machine doing half your work now. And the same thing for bus drivers. Yeah, it's a stressful job. I don't deny that. I'm not saying it's easy dealing mainly with the parents. I don't really think the kids are that big of a deal. I think it's more the the parents that are kind of the, uh, the issue there. Regardless, I'm not saying that it's an easy job, but compared to the ones driving in the fucking war zone that is Montreal, wow, they certainly deserve a pay increase if they don't already have one. But uh, the garbage men in the city, my God, they handle everything by hand. People throwing out heavy objects, couches, stoves. These guys pick this up, throw in the back of the truck. When they want to raise, when they need more benefits, I say let a rip. You know, at least it's a service I can see I directly benefit from. Whereas when nurses and doctors want more money, I say, well, yeah... Well, the time has gotten away from us again on this week's episode of Gabagool, Nate. So unfortunately, we're going to have to end it right here. So thank you for listening. I'll see you next week in new episodes every Wednesday. My name is Wes Dawson. This has been Gabagool, Nate. Please listen, like, share, and subscribe.